Well, happy Monday, YouTube friends and family, and welcome to today's edition of The Wellness Homesteader. If you're new to my channel, I want to say a big welcome. We've had a lot of new subscribers in the past week, and if you don't already know, my name is Kim. So today, we're going to do something a little bit different. I've been making a lot of soap, well, not a lot. I made a soap video on the Christmas camo soap and I had such a tremendous response. I thought, you know, I know there's a lot of you out there that have a lot of gifts and talents that would like to try to make their own soap. So maybe if I simplified it a little bit, took it down to just a small batch and just shared some details about the utensils or supplies that you're going to need, it might inspire you to make some soap for yourself. So stay tuned, I'm gonna get things organized here and we'll talk about making some soap. Okay, so this video, I really want to be kind of a soaping 101, just some basic information to help you get started. I know a lot of people are afraid of making their own lye soap or they fear that lye is harsh and it's going to harm their skin. And while lye is harsh when used properly, it produces a lovely, lovely soap. So taking it down to basics, there are two basic kinds of soap. The first kind of soap is a vegan soap. So that contains no animal products or no animal, I'll say byproducts. So things like honey or goat's milk, lard, tallow, all of those would not be used in a vegan soap. <clears throat> vegan soaps certainly have their place in the marketplace. I do more goat's milk soap than vegan soaps, but I do kind of a variety, just depending on what the person who's ordering really wants, and then I try to keep a stock of both. I can tell you my goat's milk soap always sells out first. So the second type of soap would be a non-vegan soap or an animal product-based soap. So that is my preferred soap. I think it is most healthy for our skin and I get the best reviews and the most repeat sales when I am making a goat's milk soap. So I'm very blessed to have a neighbor who keeps goats and I am able to get fresh goat's milk. And what I do is I take a regular ice cube tray, I freeze it into little cubes and these are a little under an ounce. I've tried to like get them all exact you have to weigh it anyway, so it really doesn't matter. But her goats are fed all non-GMO food. Um, their goats make all kinds of awards for 4-H and, and the fair, so it's really superior milk. At times when I've not had access to the milk and I've had to purchase goat's milk from like the store, it's still great soap, but it's not as good. So if you can find a local source of natural goat's milk, and it is illegal, at least in the state of Ohio, to sell raw goat's milk. So non-pasteurized uh, goat's milk um, doesn't have to be homogenized, but it has to be pasteurized. So um, depending on your state, raw goat's milk is even better. So you're going to need, for a non-vegan soap, you're going to need some goat's milk. You can also use cow's milk, but whatever type of milk that you're going to use, you need to make sure you freeze it. And the reason for that is lye, when added to the liquid, well, the ice cubes, which will become liquid, produces a ton of heat. So if you try to add it to liquid milk, it immediately turns orange and curdles. I find I have to stir quite a bit because even if a little bit of the lye sits in the bowl, in one spot of the milk as it's melting, it will um, turn a little bit orange, not exactly curdle, but it will discolor. So that's something to be well aware of. The second thing, in addition to your liquid, so if you're doing a vegan soap, you're going to want to use distilled water. Uh, I don't recommend just purified through a Berkey filter. Distilled works better for me, or you need your animal product milk. The second thing, you're going to need your lye. Now, I purchased my lye, not affiliated, from thelieguy.com, and I'll leave links below and in, in a recipe for you um, in the description box. 
But one of the things I want to point out to you is, yes, lie can cause blindness and serious burns. You have to be careful with lie. So not only do I have a lid on it, I tape it shut. So, because I usually lay it down in my soap supply cabinet, which we will take a tour of, I don't want any of that spilling out, not realizing it, getting it on my hand. But people will say, oh, put vinegar on it. What you actually need to do is flush, flush, flush your skin with water first. It's a very basic, not acid. People think it's acid because it burns, but it's actually a very strong base. So you will want to flush with water than vinegar. So it's nice to keep, pardon me, I hope I don't get the hiccups, to keep some vinegar, excuse me, um, and a water source on hand anytime you're going to use lye. I think it goes without saying, if you have small children or pets, you want to be sure that they are not in the area when you're using the lye. The other thing is you do not want to breathe the fumes that are produced when you add the lye to the liquid. Never add liquid to lye because it will flash up, cause a huge chemical heat reaction, and it can bubble over and cause obviously burns or just a big spill that you have to clean up, which can be a real pain when it's lye. The only lye burn I've ever had, which this is really strange, I'm very conscientious about wearing gloves. I try to always wear long sleeves in my safety glasses, but it got me once on the lip and I flushed it really well with water. It didn't blister, but it was tender for a couple days. That's been my worst experience with lye. So you could even wear a face shield if you're concerned about splashing. So I have pre-measured and this is my own developed recipe, but I'm going to leave you a similar recipe down in the description box. And this batch makes one pound of soap. Now I know that sounds like a lot, but a pound of soap in the mold we'll be using is only three large bars and a little in piece. So it's not as much as you might think. They are large bars though. The mold that you've seen me use is a 10 inch mold and that will hold three pounds of soap. And when cut the way I cut it, it makes nine bars and then again that little in piece. So I thought let's pull back a little bit, start with a smaller batch and just share with you what to do. So first thing we're gonna do is we're going to work on our lye mixture. So I'm gonna swing you down and scooch you back a little bit. So I'm gonna take this over to the sink and I am going to put my dry lye, which I have pre-weighed and you do need to weigh, not measure with a measuring cup or spoon these measurements need to be exact. So I'm gonna take it over to the sink. I'm going to add the lye to my ice cubes, and then I will show you how quickly it will melt the ice cubes. So hang tight just a second. <clears throat> so did y'all see my little intro? It is actually snowing here in Ohio, they said that it would be rain. Uh, yeah, no, it's, it's snow, but I actually was out earlier today and it was totally, totally fine. So I have added my lye crystals to my goat's milk ice cubes. And then anything that has been touched by lye, I immediately rinse with water to neutralize it. So here's what we have is just that powder in the ice cubes and I'm going to give it just a little stir. And then I want to talk about something that I add to my soaps to produce a harder bar that's easier to get out of the mold. So <laughs> I have a whole bunch of molds and I, I want to share the different types of molds with you. One of my favorite is a tall and skinny mold, but it is a nightmare getting the soap out. So you can use sodium lactate. So it's a salt solution, but it is cosmetic grade or body safe. And you use a teaspoon per pound of oil. I'm sorry. Yes, per pound of oil, per pound of soap. And by the way, soap measurements are only for the oils when we're talking about pounds. So you're not adding up everything that goes into it, it's just the oils. 
So I'm going to add here about a teaspoon of the sodium lactate because this will just make extracting the soap, that was a little scant, so much easier to get out of the mold. And then you don't end up with smooshed corners or indented fingerprinted soap. So you can see already we're starting to melt and adding that little bit of sodium lactate will really speed up the process. So that's just some basics on how to start your lye mixture if you are using a frozen, I'll say dairy product or milk product. And I've used all sorts of things. I've used tea, coffee, um, just about any liquid um, that you can imagine, you can make as a soap base. But I wanna keep it really, really simple here today. So we won't get into that today. Okay, so in this bowl, I have pre-measured my oils so you didn't have to endure watching me scoop and all of that. But I thought, let me just share with you where I get my uh, oils and some of the things I use. I always say when I check out at Walmart, they must think I'm like the biggest freak in the world because <laughs> I do buy my lard, my gallons of olive oil, and usually my organic coconut oil from there. So a lot of times the checkers are like, mm, what you making, <laughs> what you cooking? And I'm like, no, I'm not eating all that fat. But let's start with the simple one. So organic coconut oil. Uh, sometimes I buy it from Wholesale Supplies Plus. Sometimes I purchase it from Walmart. It's a little bit cheaper through Wholesale Supplies Plus, provided your order's large enough to get free shipping. Otherwise, Walmart is your best bet. This melts at 76 degrees. And I had shared on an earlier video that coconut oil can be drying when it's used exclusively. So I wanna explain that a little bit better. So soap, and really good soap, is a balance between lye and fat. So if you add more fat than you've added lye, it will produce a super fatted or a nice rich and moisturizing soap. So think of oil of Olay. So for a period of time, I used oil of Olay soap when I wasn't making a lot of soap because I was working a lot outside the home. And I was always amazed that bar just went down so fast and it was so pricey. And I actually much prefer my goat's milk soap to oil of Olay. But uh, I think Dove also says one quarter cleansing cream. All that is is they've added those additional fats to super fat the soap. So getting your proportions right as you grow in soap making, you will understand more. I just suggest that you follow recipes and that you look to see what fat percent you're going to end up with. Most recipes for soap will tell you. So the one that I use is usually at least 7% super fatted. And you would think, wow, that would make people's skin greasy, but it really doesn't. It's very nourishing without uh, clogging pores and making an overly oily situation. So that's a little bit about coconut oil and it's a great ingredient to use in soap but it works the best in combination of course with other oils so yeah i buy gallons of olive oil <clears throat> so there's two kinds of olive oil there is extra virgin olive oil and this is less processed than the olive oil that says classic olive oil and see the color difference so if you're trying to produce a very light colored soap or you don't want the colors you're using to be tainted by a, a yellow greenish cast, you're probably going to use the classic olive oil. For the soap I'm making today, it's gonna to be all these pretty marbled brown hues. So I use the extra virgin olive oil. It is less refined, less processed. So, uh, more nourishing for you than classic olive oil. So yes, you can go to Walmart and buy the gallons. I also often purchase my olive oil from Wholesale Supplies Plus. Again, if I'm doing a big order where shipping is free, and I'm sorry, I keep swiping out my hair. So another fat, this 
is so awesome. <laughs> I buy these big tubs of lard. So you can get uh, pork fat, render it, um, and then you have to strain it and strain it and strain it to get it pure. Let me just show you how nicely this has been refined and how white it really is. So think about when you fry bacon, what bacon grease looks like compared to this lard. So if you don't want to use lard, another animal fat that's great for soak is tallow, and that is beef fat. I personally do not make any soaps with tallow, and, and it's a personal preference because I don't feel the quality of my soap is as good but I know many soap makers who use tallow exclusively. So you do have the option of lard or tallow. Tallow I've never seen, you know, just like on the shelf at the grocery. But again, considering where I live, you know, being so far away from big city, there may be tallow where you live that you can purchase, or you may have a local farmer or even farmer's market where you can get your tallow. Another ingredient, and I feel this, I'm telling you my secrets, y'all. I feel that castor oil is really what makes my soap a little bit unique. So I am sharing that. Um, not everyone uses castor oil in their soap. I've shared before, if you use too much castor oil, your soap will be slimy. It won't want to harden. So weighing those ingredients, using the proper combination, and understanding how the oils are going to work together, so it might take a little bit of research on the recipe, will produce the best soap. So this is from Home Health. It is um, cold process, it's 100% solvent free. You can also buy um, castor oil that's used as a laxative. I mean, that that is what it is, but this being um, cold process doesn't contain any hexane. So you wanna make sure that you're using a high quality medical grade body safe castor oil. It's not super expensive in the little bottles. Um, this is about $3. It is, I think four, uh, nope, it's six ounces and in a typical uh, one pound recipe, you're gonna use around an ounce. So you could get six one ounce batches out of this little $3 bar. So those are the main oils that I like to use when I'm producing a simple skin pleasing soap. So I am going to go ahead and melt my oils, let them start cooling because our goat's milk here is becoming pretty liquid. It still has some ice cubes in it because this will have to be heated up and then cooled down and it needs to be within 20 degrees of each other. So stay tuned while I heat this up, let it get mixed together well and then cooled back down to temperature and I'll bring you back. <laughs> 